everybody, and welcome to Computer Gaming. I am Flute5311. And I'm Soul Slayer. And we are here with our sixth Let's Talk. Um, we didn't do one last week. There was a lot of information that came out, and so we're kind of like eh, a week and a half behind scheduling and whatnot, but here we are, and uh, we're ready to go, I think. Yeah, I think we're ready to go. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that they dropped in the uh, the update. A lot of little things to like sweeten the deal, I think, is what they did. And then there was a lot of big things, like they actually did give us a bit more vault space in the in the update. Not as much as we'd like, but it was helpful. So we're talking about patch 1.1.2 for Destiny that we that just hit us. So yeah, we got we got a little bit of vault space. They said. I think they realize it's not what's going to be needed. They said it's just enough to get us through the House of Wolves. So I guess that's fair, um, even though I think my stuff's already full. Um, <laughs> it didn't take long <laughs> to fill it up. Um, I kind of unloaded my, my Guardians a little bit. They're all a little walking a little lighter now since they don't have as many guns in their backpacks just trying to, trying to struggle. I think my Hunter jumps a little bit higher now. <laughs> he needs the help. Yeah, he needs all the help he can get. Hunter, Hunter jump is a struggle. But we got a lot of stuff. Not only did we got the vault space, that um, we got some great audio changes uh, that we can now adjust, t turn the game volume down, turn the chat volume up. We can we can turn off the music completely, which is good because they had that tune just a little loud, I think. Yeah, I never really had too much trouble with it because I was always able to set the game audio and the in the party audio separate with the uh, adapter at the base of the Xbox One controller. Uh, but I could see how some people like you would need the uh, the internal audio changes. Well, I mean, I mean, I've got the adapter too, and even with getting it dialed in, because I usually have it all the way to, like, party chat, I usually have it maxed out minus one. So I've got, I have one click towards game audio on my adapter. And even then, it's just it's just so loud. Um, just because I'm trying to hear what, because you know, for the most part, you don't really need to hear a whole lot in game. Um, and there's a couple times where you know you're trying to listen for stealth vandals. Um, it's not like Call of Duty where you're trying to sound whore everybody. <laughs> right. Dead silence, baby. Dead silence. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the, there are very few audio cues in the game. Um, you know, like I said, stealth vandals. Um, there's a couple times when you have change of music that kind of signifies a change in the, in the game. Um, but that's really about it. So you don't need it to be so flipping loud. And for the most part, I'm trying to hear everybody's talking and call outs, and that's way more important than, you know, sweet music. Yeah, very true, very true. But they, uh, they had a lot of... Uh little things that came in this update too uh they changed the color of the ball in the tower which i thought was really entertaining yeah when all hail the new kick ball it, right lights up yeah it, the changes with with whether it's lighter light outside or dark outside it, it changes either, right it's either kind of a blue color or it's kind of a reddish color which is there you go somebody got hopefully somebody got a sweet overtime check for fixing the ball making it cool Yep. <laughs> but yeah, so so we got the ball. Um, we got the jukebox downstairs, which is down in the bar. If you haven't checked it out, right down there. I don't know. There are there are a handful of little music tracks you can go play. And I guess somebody said that there's like a, a remixed version of a Halo song. I don't know. I'm not a Haloite, but apparently there's like a remixed Halo song down there that people were getting all excited about on the internet. I don't know. I'm gonna have to check that out. I know the Halo soundtrack pretty well, so I should be able to pick it out. <laughs> Yeah, they fixed part of the, a lot of the raid, which I'm I'm trying to I've been trying to get the raid team back together. We got a raid together last week, which I was super stoked about, and you got the necrochasm, so congrats for you. I'm still holding out for my necrochasm, um, but apparently they fixed a lot of raid stuff, so I'm excited to get back in there and see to see if Crota's not such a pain anymore. We also got uh, a lot of crucible changes. I have not been into the crucible yet because I'm sure it's going to be a nightmare with Zero selling last word. So I kind of avoided <laughs> I avoided crucible <laughs> this weekend. I was going to get in there and check it out to see what changes were made, but then Zero sold last word. I'm like, eh, no, no, I'm not going to do it this weekend. <laughs> no, they uh, they did change a lot in the crucible raid, and I, I haven't gone in there either. Or the crucible, I haven't got, I haven't gone in there either. It's just there's. Uh, with everything that they said they changed, I'm worried about how the whole thing is going to flow now. Like, they just limited the uh, the special ammo by so much that it's just going to change how Crucible is played now. 
So I'm actually kind of, I'm kind of curious if I'm going to have to change my play style to fit that. Well, I think it was a way of nerfing shotguns and final round snipers without actually nerfing shotguns and final round snipers. <clears throat> True. You know, I think this was the way they could do it without actually going through and, and doing all the weapon balancing and trying to fix it all over again. You know, because you have to balance PvP versus PvE. And, you know, I don't envy those guys in the slightest bit, the, the crew that has to work on that. So I think they kind oh, of God, did the no. best they could do um, without going through and playing with all the... Because we know we had the big weapons patch in 1.1.1, and I don't think they wanted to go through and mess with it again. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want to after putting all that work in there and then try to change PvP by changing the weapons. Yeah, no. It, you, it feels like you're being a bit redundant at that point, like going in multiple times to yeah. just change certain things. It's, it seems like a, kind of a waste of resources. Yeah, and so so 1.1.2 1. 1. hit, and then we got, and then Monday came along, and or that so that came on, what was, that, that was the Tuesday update, but Monday, Monday was a huge day. I mean, we made two videos uh, as quickly as we could, and then, I mean, gosh, it was nuts, because we got, uh, drop, tons of information dropped about House of Wolves coming up. We've got alright, so we have House of Wolves coming out May 19th. That was released. That's going to be awesome. Um, it's going to have Trials of Osiris, which we're, you know, thinking is going to be a 3v3 PvP um, event. I'm hoping that that's a full-time event. It's not just one day, but it's a full-time or a, like a week, one weekend or one week thing. I'm hoping it's going to be <clears throat> something in-game for PvP people to get into, you know, every week. Like, we've got the raid, you know, for PvE. They've got, you know, you can go through a raid every single week, but you have to wait for Iron Banner to come around constantly. Otherwise, you'll never get... That's the only way you can get to 32 with um, PvP gear. So I'm hoping that they kind of make this kind of like a raid setup so that you can go through and PvP every single week and, and really to build your stuff. So we've got that coming up, uh, came out. It was also released that there's not going to be a raid. No raid, no six-person raid. We're going to have the Prison of Elders instead, which they said is going to be a repeatable three-person game mode, which is good because they need something that's that you can, re not repeatable, replayable. Because, you know, Crota, uh, Crota was not that as fun to replay. Not nearly as fun. I still think Vault of Glass had a lot more replayability. Um, just because of all the bugs that were associated with, <laughs> with Crota. Yeah. But I'm curious to see what they're going to do, um, uh, with Prison of Elders. I'm hoping that they're going to have maybe, maybe it's like a Nightfall, right? Maybe they'll have like a weekly, every week that you get new modifiers, or maybe you've got a new batch of people to kill. What do you think? Tell you the truth, I don't even know. I think it's very much up in the air with the Prison of Elders. But, uh, to, to hop back a little bit with the Trials of Osiris, um, I actually am re I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a steady thing. I don't think it's going to be one week it's here, one week it's not. Because they, they, the things that were data mined a while ago for that was that there's going to be bounties associated with it that are, how do you phrase it? It was bounties that evolved with you, kind of. Where you complete a sure. task, the next bounty came unlocked. You completed that task, the next bounty unlocked, and it was all, it was all based on how long you stayed within the trials of Osiris. Because if you lose so many matches, you get kicked out. So I'm thinking yep. for giving people the time to be able to try to do those. I think it's going to wind up being a permanent thing. Well, and I, and I think with the again, this is all data mine. We have no idea with with the three and out system. It's going to be right. very hard to do in a week. Right, and so I think right. having it that you can really progress hard <clears throat> in a weekly in a weekly scenario, and the armor looks flipping amazing, and the guns look awesome. We did a we did a video um, with some updated data mined all speculation, of course. Um, right. I did a video about uh, outlining all the guns and their perks and whatnot, and the, the jewel of Osiris looks awesome. It um, does. At least really that does. image there, and if that really is a three round hand cannon. With final round and um, luck in the chamber, that's going to be so much fun to play with. <laughs> that's going to be so broken for PvP. <laughs> it really is. Well, it's going to be kind of like Hawkmoon, right? Hawkmoon can do a two-round hit. Um, Tech Thorn has a two-round headshot. Last word. Yeah, does last word well. does too. So, 
I don't know. And this one you only get three rounds. So who knows? I think it's going to be fun. Um, so so there's that. And then we've got Prison of Elders, which, which we mentioned. And and I think that's kind of all they've all they've forecasted for us so far. They do have um, – they gave us a calendar. They had the House of Wolves calendar of events um, where Bungie is going to be doing a live streaming event. And um, I'm for sure going to be watching those and probably live tweeting it for you. So give us a follow at Committed Gaming over there at uh, on on the Twitter. Uh, so on April 22nd, we're getting a walking tour of the reef uh, with live discussion about the upgrade paths for your gear, which we're going to go back to that here in one second. Um, on April 29th, they're going to have a live gameplay of Trials of the Osiris and its collection of in-game gear. So that's going to be really really slick to see how it's we can finally stop guessing and see what it's actually going to be because we've only heard about Trials of Osiris oh since about what week three <laughs> yeah something <laughs> like that been, it's been quite some time we've been musing about that for a while then May 6th uh, they reveal and live gameplay of Prison of Elders um, as is, you know brand new three person cooperative multiplayer arena and then May 8th it just says stay tuned um, that's all it says so nothing more nothing less so I'm I'm there's 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 the rumor mill that we might actually get a raid eventually because of the long stint between uh, when we're getting this and when Comet is supposedly supposed to come out in September or whatever. So they're thinking that the, the rumor mill is that maybe we'll get a raid like that way they'll have a good you know they'll have time to get it quote polished and ready to go, and then that raid will kind of carry us through. Um, but anyway, that, that's some, uh, enough hypothesis and speculation. But let's go back here and talk about weapon. Now this says um, pass for your gear. Weapons and gear. It's been said that weapons and gear are going to be upgraded, which is going to be interesting. So I wonder if they're going to, you know, everybody's thinking that they're going to upgrade the raids, right, to like level 34. And that's how you're going to go get thinking. back and get your – that's how you're going to go back and get your 365 Favoringer. And you can't just go and spend some modes of light and upgrade it. Yeah, I'm thinking they're going to make you work for it, but I'm hoping that if they do wind up doing that, they change the loot system to the Crota Raid loot system so we're not yes, grinding for another agree. 30 years to get the Fatebringer again. I'm really the hoping they change it over. <laughs> the Forever 29, right? That was the that was the right. meme and the joke that, you know, the the grind was so friggin' hard in the Vault of Glass to try to get gear and weapons. Um I mean, you still don't have a Vex. I finally got mine after forever long. You still don't have one. And people, I mean, the, the Prey of Timepiece is still one of the rarest guns in the game. Yep, and the amount of times people have done that raid that you figure people would have these guns by now, but they don't. They really they don't. And yet, don't. I'm, I'm still fiending for a Vex. I really am. <laughs> So so let's 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 talk about the Vex real quick because it was mentioned you know because people asked like you know is the Vex gonna be able to be upgraded in the next one and they you know Bungie said or Bungie or Deej either way same per same thing said that same the thing. the Vex is gonna be frozen in time right in in, in the whole both of glass terms but with Vault guns being upgraded to three sixty five are they gonna bump the Vex to three sixty five? Or is it going to be, quote, frozen at whatever it is, 321 or whatever? I don't know, to tell you the truth. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. That's something we're just going to have to wait and see. It w would be cool. Like, uh, let's say Vault of Glass Raid Gear, Crota Raid Gear, Iron Banner, Trials of Osiris, Prison of Elders, all of those have, you know, max light cap raid gear, right? So that way we could all, everybody can look just a little bit different. We'll have you know several options of max light raid max light gear, and that way we can all kind of you know rock out our favorite end game event or whatever it is that we that we uh, just add just a little bit of diversity. Wouldn't that be kind of neat? That would be fantastic because then everyone wouldn't look the same. <laughs> We'd have <laughs> different gear. People would, like you'd see a bunch of people all being max light level, and they'd all look different. That would be fantastic. Just a little different. Now they um, somewhere Deej commented on a forum somewhere that they we're gonna get we're getting private lobbies. I don't know with if we're getting them with House of Wolves or if we're getting them with Comet, but we will be getting private lobbies um, for PvP and um, transmogrifier type things where you can change the look of stuff. 
uh, my World of Warcraft had. I think that was commented. Um, it was all over the internet. I haven't actually read the post. I should probably go find it instead of just making stuff up off of what I like fifth hand. But anyway, <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so it sounds like we're getting a transmogrifier system where you can go through and change the look of stuff. So like we can all have our raid gear, but we can change the colors of it, which would be kind of slick. Um, That'd be very and cool. And private lobbies, which I am so excited for private lobbies. Because, I mean, it's really hard to develop a competitive PvP environment if you don't have private lobbies. If people, A, can't get together and practice against each other, or, you know, if we can, you can't even have, like, you know, Call of Duty or Halo-style events if people can't, can't play against each other. It's like, well, you know, we, there's no way for us to get into the same lobby to play, so therefore it's really hard to develop that competitive edge. Or for us to be able to play and practice around to check, try things out. Like if I wanted to go out and say, hey, I've got this new build, I want to go try it out. Um, can you just kind of, we'll just kind of run some scenarios and, and it's just hard to do. Except you do it all, all on the fly in, in normal Crucible. Right, and the thing is that I wish you could do is just learn the maps. They like they keep coming out with new right? maps, and it's just right. you have you have to learn the maps while fighting for your life, and then you just run around confused half the time, and then it, you do learn it after a while, but it's just it's still really frustrating not knowing how the maps work, and then you just get you go into a room, and it's like wait, where the hell am I? And then wait, my head's missing. That's what I would do with Call of Duty. I would go turn a couple bots on. And run around a map and just see where everything is. Um, I mean, that's how I learned most of the maps. I would do that for a few games before I would go into actual, you know, pubs matches. Because I would just, you know, when whenever new DLC comes out, okay, where am I going? Where are the spawn points going to be? Where are the choke points? Where A, where's A, where's A, B, and C flags? You know, where are the bomb sites? And and it's just so hard to do that while on the fly and running around getting chased. So yes, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that kind of wraps up what we've got for for the bungees and the destinies. Um, there's just so much there. We probably should have done seven videos on that, but I think we we wrapped that up pretty well. I think. Um, <laughs> I think we other did pretty things, good. <laughs> other things we've got coming out. Um, Black Ops Three. They've got their whole hype train running right now. Um, they had they they revealed this week a reveal for their reveal. Um, <laughs> so they're having their big reveal of Black Ops on uh, April 26th. Um, they've done this. It's really interesting. They've, some, they've done this whole snack that kind of falls in line with Black Ops theory, with Black Ops series in general. Um, it does seem to be that they're probably going to have. I mean, the the images and stuff that they kind of showed, um, or I think there was a leaked image of a guy sitting there for the cover art for the game. He looks like he might have another exosuit on. So I know. Looks like that's still going to be a thing. I'm so not happy about that. Like, I, I I, prefer the old way the Call of Duty games were played. They were fantastic. And then you're adding vertical movement, and it's just, I'm going to get lost. Yep. I mean, I'm okay with the double jump. Sure, throw, throw a double jump in there. That's fine. Um and, and I, I watched COD Champs. I, I still watch COD, competitive COD occasionally. I don't play. I didn't buy Advanced Warfare. Um, it just looks so hard. The movement is so jerky watching these guys play. I just couldn't even, I don't know. I don't think it's, it's not for me. That's, and that's all there is to it. Everybody else, some people may like it. That's great. It's just, uh, it's not a thing for me. Yeah, I don't think it's a thing for me either. So that's why I'm just really hoping because Black Ops 2, they did a very good job with. Like, I loved Black Ops 2, and I just, I really hope with Black Ops 3 they don't do the exosuits, and they just kind of keep it to the the normal Black Ops. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Also this week, we got a, we got the uh, uh, the release date for Star Wars Battlefront, November 17th. Oh man, in the trailer, if you haven't seen the trailer, go check it out. It looks absolutely gorgeous, and it, it even has a little thing on there that says, you know, early in-game engine or whatever and if that's actually how it's going to look when it's running holy crap yeah that trailer looked absolutely fantastic and yeah if it is how the game's going to look like i i'm always leery about that because i've i've seen trailers that look absolutely fantastic yeah, oh, and yeah. we've been burned and then, by that <laughs> yeah and then they wind up being absolute crap when you actually play it but if they if they say that that's how it's going to be ugh. That, that will be fantastic. 
I mean, that looked extremely real. And I also like how they included, like, some of the <clears throat> Star Wars, like, Star Wars movie special effects. Like, when things blow up, there's, like, sparks and stuff everywhere, which is, you know, it's very typical of LucasArts style. So I'm glad they kind of kept those little things in there. And this game is supposed to be based on the first three movies, the original three, not the first three, but the original three movies. Um, which it's going to be great. There's, there's not going to be any, any as many as um, any space battles, but it looks like, and I, and I kind of mentioned this when we were kind of talking earlier before we started doing this, um, that it looks very similar to Rogue Squadron from Nintendo 64. For those of you, you know, cool kids who hung out with me at one point, and <laughs> I don't know if I, <laughs> old enough who had an N64 and had this game. You had to get the enhancer pack on it to get the extra 32 bits of memory to get the extra graphics, like you do. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it looked, um, it looks very similar to that, where you've got like kind of canyon chasings and and, and, and you're fighting in, in kind of lower altitude arenas. Gotcha. Now, did you play yeah. Battlefront? I never played it. Oh, I did. I, I, I played the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Because I never played either one of them. I didn't have a system that they were on. I don't think. I don't know if they had the first one was on, but the first one was on. But I didn't play the second one. I know. Uh, the second one was so much fun. It really was. I, I've spent hours with my friends playing that game. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm probably gonna pick that one up, mostly just because I'm a Star Wars nerd. I, you know, I've got. Yeah. Anyway, that's probably going to be a thing for me. So it looks it looks awesome. Also, they said you're going to get a free DLC pack that's going to come like in December. So, like within a month after the game coming out, you're going to get a DLC of like the Battle of Jakku or Jakku, uh, yeah, like another kind of desert planet. Um, shortly thereafter, which is supposed to it was supposed to be the battle that takes place like I don't know, eight months, eight years. I can't remember what they said after the Battle of Endor. So it's just shortly after the Battle of Endor. There's another battle. Um, that they're going to kind of showcase there. Gotcha. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, other than that, I think I've covered everything. Oh, uh, the Xbox update, for whatever little tidbits that were. It looks like they, they, they put a video out saying that they're going to uh, be introducing a TV tuner to your Xbox. So you can, for those of us who, like myself, who don't have fancy satellite TV, um, you can get regular over-the-air broadcast channels to your Xbox, you hook up this little thing to it, and then you hook up your little antenna to it, and then you can watch it because all all the little you know my TV stuff that that it does for the satellite people. Uh, I'm gonna do it for regular tuner TV, and the coolest thing, because that part like man, I don't need to my, turn on my Xbox to do that. I can just do that through my regular TV. But the cool thing is that they have a, um, a mechanic in there where you can a you can watch it on your smart glass, so you can watch it on your iPad or whatever else. And you can record like up to 30 minutes worth of TV. So if you you can pause, I think they call it, I can't remember what they call it, but you can like pause it and come back and it's, you can actually kind of have a, like a mini DVR with your Xbox. Which 30 minutes is really only like one show, one episode. Yeah, it's one episode. So it's very, yeah. it's very limited, but still, that's still very cool. It's it's pretty cool. I don't know. It's something neat, especially like I said, for people who don't have fancy TV. Um, it's going to need. <sighs> well, I'm looking through my notes here. I don't think I had much else. Did you have anything else? No, I think we went over everything that I want to talk about. All right. Well, cool. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we'll, we'll be, like I said, we'll be live tweeting the event on Wednesday. We'll have our weekly update coming up on Tuesday. And uh, we have a lot of neat stuff that we're, we're kind of committed gaming has been working on. We've got... Uh, hopefully we can kind of give you some sneak peeks and previews of, of some things that we, that we might have in development here. We're pretty excited about. Yeah, that'd be very cool if we could actually give them like little tidbits. Not the whole thing, just just enough that you'll get you guys will be at interest. Hype! In <laughs> give me the gaming hype. hype. Train. <laughs> I don't think we can have a hype campaign, but we'll try. Um, we'll but anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in, and uh, I'm Flute Fifty Three Eleven. And I'm so slay. And to all you gamers out there, stay committed.